Hey, this is a multi-part series and I have linked part number one in the video description down below. Oh, and if you want to follow along, you go to procurementzen.com slash digital where you can download the resources, chat with fellow students. And by the way, it's completely free. So let's start with video. Welcome to lesson number two. In this video, I'm going to show you your way around in the nine user interface and how you can adjust it so it best suits your procurement professional's needs. Here we are in the NIME analytics platform user interface and one short disclaimer due to the fact that I'm already using NIME for quite some time, some windows and some docs, we come to that in a second, might look different on my side than on yours. But without further ado, let's just quickly go through this interface. So at the top below the title of the application, you see a very common uh, a menu that you know from a lot of other programs. You have file edit view. I barely use any one of them. Um, below that we have a few icons. I also barely use any one of those and I'll share with you in a minute why. Um, then on the left hand side you see what is called the NIME Explorer and the NIME Explorer basically is similar to the Windows Explorer or on Apple's I think it's called Apple Finder. It's basically within the NIME application your data structure. Data not in, in regards to data that you import but your workflows and your files and how they are organized. And you see that we have folders in which we can create subfolders in which we can create subfolders to as many levels as we like and within that you see this small little triangle icons that is called a NIME workflow. Once again we come to what a workflow is but that's a very good way to structure your work when you start to work with NIME in a logical way. Below that you see the workflow coach which I barely use and yours may be empty if you installed a brand new version of NIME. Below that is the second most important window in NIME and that is the note repository. So if we look at NIME and we will learn what nodes and workflows are, NIME is node based. Very important, especially when you get a little bit used to NIME, there is an active search bar. So let me just, I know for example that there is a node within NIME that's very useful to import um, Excel files and it's the so-called Excel reader nodes. So I just write Excel here and I get the Excel reader node here and then I could drag it to what is the most important part of the NIME user interface, the workflow or I also like to call it the canvas. So you just drag and drop it over here but we're going to practice that much more in detail over the next lessons. So let's just quickly delete that again and go to the next session. I told you that this is the canvas or the workflow you're currently working in. Also you can see you can have multiple ones open and ones that have this little asterisk here at the beginning means they're not yet saved. So just click Control S for save or we could also go to File, Save, which we just done by the keyboard shortcut and then it saves the workflow and its current status locally to your disk. So let's just jump over to another workflow I've prepared for you and it's a very nerdy one. It's about role playing and magic spells. So let me just quickly show that. So what you also can see here that you could do you have these scroll bars but also once again it's one of the features I barely ever use. There are two ways to work within the workflow because these nodes that you can see here quickly start to sum up. Very soon you will have lots and lots and lots of nodes and it makes sense to structure your workflows in a certain way. But as I said we will cover that later. You see below the workflow here this little outliner or outline. If I just move this blue square around you can see that I can move freely to any place within my workflow. So that's very important. That's the first way how you 
work in complex workflows that go over the borders, quote unquote, if you wish, of your user interface limitations. The second one that you also could do is if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, which I assume you have, you could just use the scroll wheel to scroll down and up. Or if you hold down the control key, you could scroll in and out. And as you can see above here, that changes their percentage view, the zoom level, if you want, of the overall workflow window. So if I just zoom out, you see it goes down. Or if I just jump in, it goes up. All right. So the next two windows are combined ones. Um, and that is the console. Let me just quickly delete that, make it empty. And you saw that maybe a few error messages were there. The Nine console is extremely useful when it comes to something went wrong and Nine wants to tell you what it was. So the messages in the Nine console are usually very speaking, if you want. Um, because they quickly tell you what exactly was the error rather than a cryptic error message. Besides that is another useful um, you window or tab that I use and that is the node monitor. And the node monitor, and we come to using that in a second, show you the result that each of these nodes, each of the little functions um, have presented once they have been executed. Then we have above here the description. So if I click a node, just look how the description changes. Currently I'm on a string manipulation node and you see here a description what it does. So it's a built-in help function. If I now go to the Excel writer, it basically says what the Excel writer does. If I have nothing selected, it just gives me an overview information about my workflow. And besides that, as a little window, we have the NIME hub. I barely ever used it. If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with NIME. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.